Recently, someone commented on one of my videos saying, is it possible the lady I'm dating is not a full-fledged covert narcissist, but just displays narcissistic tendencies once in a while? What if we enjoy great time together and then end the day on a sour note because she calls me selfish or sends me pages of nasty text messages at night whenever I try to defend or explain myself? I'm making a video about this because this is such a common question, which speaks directly to the typical abusive cycle of the narcissist and their Jekyll and Hyde nature, where you see this amazing, incredible person on the one side that you have fun with, great sex with, and magical moments, and then there's the critical, condescending, manipulative, and nasty person on the other side. The positive side is just so perfect and you want it so badly. If only they could change that negative stuff. Maybe you could help them with that. Or maybe you figure you can handle it. You'll just take the good and leave the bad. Not realizing how destructive and damaging a narcissist can be. Just like an addiction at first, they seem like the perfect drug, but as time goes on, they insidiously destroy every square inch of your life. At first, it feels so good, but it comes at a huge price. Over time, you build tolerance, the highs get less high, and like a drug, you get addicted to the very thing that is slowly and systematically killing you. People who've realized that they are in a relationship with a narcissist will feel confused and uncertain about whether to leave. They think, what if I'm wrong? What if I'm making a mistake, giving up too soon? Or maybe I need to just try a little harder. And I get that you might feel like you need to be more certain. You want a higher level of confidence before leaving the relationship. But instead of getting clarity, you'll get increasingly confused and emotionally battered. Giving this relationship a few more weeks can easily turn into losing years of your life caught up in the narcissist's web of lies, deceptions, and psychological abuse. I'm Lise LeBlanc, and in today's video, I'm going to give you seven clues to determine whether your partner is a narcissist. And at the end of this video, I will give you the most compelling question that will give you the ultimate clarity on what to do about your relationship with a narcissistic person, regardless of whether they are a full-fledged narcissist. Okay, so number one clue that your partner, or anyone really, is narcissistic to a point of being toxic to you is that you are researching whether they are a narcissist or a toxic person. That's your intuition telling you something is off. So if it feels off, it probably is. Second, you find yourself justifying and excusing things that you know are not okay because the person is so great in other ways and they make you feel really good and really special at times. If this is your situation, then take a step back and consult with an objective third party, someone you trust, so you can get a more accurate picture of what's going on. And if the people you trust are warning you about your partner, listen, they are the sober ones. You have already been drugged by the narcissist. So, if you find yourself justifying and defending your partner to people you have trusted for years, that's a bad sign. The third thing to indicate that their level of narcissism is toxic is that when you try to talk about your concerns, they will love and sex bomb you to avoid discussions of any type of problems, that, especially early in the relationship. Later on, the narcissist will use more aggressive techniques to shut you down, such as gaslighting, deflecting, and intimidation. But regardless of what stage you're at in the relationship, you do not feel safe in bringing up any type of concern or complaint. Number four, you feel exhilarated and exhausted by them. You're confused by the cycle of feeling like you're so special and loved, followed by punishments, insults, stonewalling, intimidation, and rejection. Number five, you feel like you're being manipulated, lied to, deceived, and controlled. I often tell clients to start tracking when they feel they are being manipulated with a simple check mark on a calendar. In the beginning of the relationship, the narcissist will be on their best behavior, so there may not be 
too many check marks on the calendar. But as things progress and their mask starts to come off, those check marks will start to accumulate. And you'll get a visual and a more objective picture on how frequently they are manipulating you. Now, you might question whether they are actually manipulating you, whether this or that thing should count. But just be fair and honest. Don't overthink it. If it feels like manipulation, count it. Because you know what? If you weren't in a toxic relationship, you wouldn't need this strategy to try to count how many times you're being manipulated. Number six, your boundaries are not being respected. And instead of letting your guard down as you get further into the relationship, your walls are going up. With the narcissist, you feel you need more boundaries to protect yourself as the relationship moves forward. Where in a healthy relationship, the opposite happens. Trust and respect should be building up. So if you are with a narcissist, you need to decide within yourself and probably write it down what your boundaries are, what you are not willing to tolerate. These are what I call your non-negotiables. And pay attention to whether those boundaries are being pushed. For example, if you say, I'm not going to tolerate being called names or sworn at, then it happens once. Maybe you justify it in your mind and excuse it this one time. Then it happens again. You don't like it, but is it really that bad? Is it really a reason to end the relationship? So your lines are getting pushed back and you feel like you need even more boundaries to keep yourself safe. Number seven, they do not show guilt, remorse, or regret. So even when caught red-handed, the narcissist will still try to deny and deflect. They'll get hostile and aggressive. But sometimes, especially the covert narcissist, might have an intense emotional response when caught. And it can look like guilt, but it's not. It's shame. And if you listen, you'll see that they are not focused on your pain or how their wrongdoing hurt you. They are in a meltdown about how you're going to perceive them as a bad person or what it means about them or how it might affect their life. This is not a fake performance. They are in legitimate distress, but it's all about them. Another thing that I mention in almost all of my videos is that the relationship brings out the worst in you. You're going downhill mentally and emotionally, behaving in ways that are uncharacteristic of you. So if you go from being a relatively happy, healthy, stable person to an anxious, angry, depressed, distant, detached, dissociated, stressed out person, and if you feel like you're losing your mind, this is a sure shot way of telling that you are in a toxic relationship. And maybe they are still fun, affectionate, and you still have good times together. But if the good always comes with a huge dose of poison, it's not worth it, regardless of whether or not they're a full-fledged narcissist. As promised, here's the top reason to leave a narcissist once you realize you're being poisoned. It's that the cycle will go on forever. You are not going to be able to save them or teach them to be a non-narcissist. It's who they are. So if you need the narcissist to change in order to be happy with them, just know that they are not going to change. The cycle will continue to repeat itself until the web of confusion becomes your prison. And if you get discarded, take it as a gift and pity the next person who they will run through the exact same cycle of abuse. And to break down the cycle of abuse really quickly, step one, they make you believe they are the perfect partner for you, your soulmate, the missing piece to make your life complete. And this stage is often called idealization, love bombing, but it basically consists of constant positive reinforcement to blind you, seduce you, and get you addicted to them. Step two, the mask comes off and they start confusing you mentally and emotionally. This is the devaluation and dominant stage where cognitive dissonance and trauma bonding is used to make you dependent on them. They'll use a schedule of intermittent reinforcement and punishment to confuse, control, and manipulate you. Number three is where they exploit you, drain you of your money, attention, and anything else 
you have. They take, take, take until you have nothing left to give and then comes step four, the discard. They've broken you down, gotten everything out of you. You are now useless to them. So they wash their hands of you, find someone else, usually before the discard, and repeat the same cycle on them. If you are unlucky and don't get discarded, then expect to be abused and punished for the rest of the relationship. So how many times would you need to witness this cycle happening to a friend or family member before knowing it's not good for them? Would you need to see this cycle 5, 10, 20 times to be sure? So ask yourself, what advice would you give your son or daughter or your best friend if they were in your exact situation? And follow your own advice. Don't give the narcissist another opportunity to poison you and rob you of another week, month, or years of your life. And if you do, manage your expectations and make sure you're not doing it in hopes that they will change. Expect them to be the perfect poison. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe to my channel and check out some of my other videos on narcissistic personality disorder.